Just even when it comes to preaching, you got to fight to stay woke, some of you. <laughs> but when it comes to a mo- when it comes to a movie. We moving like the ones in the screen. When the word is being preached. Have you, have you ever asked yourself why? That's right. That's well, Pastor Jennings, I worked last night. You worked the night before that, and you set up five more hours and watch television. That's true. You came in the same time. That's true. The word of the Lord is the most important thing in your life. So nothing else have relevance or importance like Jesus do. That's right. And this is why Satan by any means necessary don't want us to get the importance of the scriptures in our heart and in our mind so everything out there become a distraction. That's right. Until church become nothing but pastime. That's right. You going to church today? Oh yeah, I go. Hmm. You going? You going to that party tonight? A party? When? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm going. They come getting out their car, getting in line, waiting, waiting for the little men. They're standing in line. <laughs> Let me see your ID. <laughs> they come right, come right in the doors. <laughs> But when they come to church, they don't fulfill the scripture. <laughs> right. The scripture says, I was glad. I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's right. The scripture says that. That's right. So look at yourself. Are you glad to go to God's house more than you are to work? More than you are to his house? More than you are to her house? Who's not your wife, not your husband? There's nothing more important than God is. That's right. And until the human family prioritize, until you prioritize and Jesus himself is first in your life, you will be drug all around in sin until you die. That's right. Listen at this. St. Mark 4 and verse 19. Come on, son. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. It does what? Choke the word. All right. What little one may have learned. The word of God must develop in them like a child developing a woman. That's right. And it grows and it grows. That's the way the word of God forms itself. Thank God within your soul. That's right. When a child is born, mother don't put it down so it can walk. It's not able to walk yet. No. So when you just come into the knowledge of the truth and learn, it's not time for you to witness to nobody out there. No. You first have to learn so your information will be correct what you tell someone. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So if I'm trying to get myself right <laughs> and trying to do me and work on me, then I don't have no time to look at nobody else but me. That's right. And what I need to come up to, I must ask God to help me to overcome that thing or things that's gripping me so tight. That's right. Nobody and nothing is worth going to hell for. Amen. Am I right? Nobody and nothing is worth me losing my soul. What will a man give? Glory to God in exchange for a soul. For a soul. What would you give? What would you give? Or should I ask, what are you giving? Hmm. What are you finding hard to get rid of? And yet you know that thing or things will cause you to be lost. That's right. That's right. Let me ask you again. What are those things that is hard for you to get rid of? Amen. That you know you will never get into the kingdom of God with it. Hmm. 
But yet, you're not asking God to get rid of it. That's right. How bad do you want to be saved? Like many of you that repent of your sins and be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, you get baptized and then go right back to the false church you come from. Man, you'll go to hell just like you never was baptized. That's right. Or you'll go back out there in the street and live a wild, foolish life. Don't misunderstand me. You're not going to change overnight. But there come a time that everybody, just like the caterpillar, has to go into the cocoon and stay there until transformation take place. That's right. There come a time in your life, thank God, that you must be transformed. transformed. The Bible speaks plain. Right. Be not conformed. To this world. You better give me this. In Romans chapter 12 and at verse 2. Romans chapter 12, begin at verse 1. Romans 12 and at verse 1. All right. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Glory to God. That you present. I beseech you therefore, brethren. By the mercies of God. By God's mercy. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice you want it to be? Holy. What? Holy. Glory to God. Amen. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Acceptable unto your friends. Acceptable unto God. That's right. Acceptable to your parents. Acceptable unto God. To your children. Unto God. Husband or wife. Unto God. That's right. See, what God may accept, your husband may not. That's true. What God may accept, your wife may not. Right. Because when that husband say, look, I, I want to change my life now. I'm mm -hmm. getting older. I'm getting older. And I'm tired of living like I am, but living like this for the longest. And that man repent of his sins and go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Now he seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost slowly but surely. Thank God he start get distancing himself right. from the things he used to do. That's against God. That's right. Stop going out to the parties and the late night clubs and to the bar hanging out with friends while, while they drinking beer and he can't bring the excuse. Well, I'm not drinking it. The Bible says don't keep company with them. That's right. The Bible goes as far as tell us not to keep company with them. Hey, I can't make an excuse and say I'm not drinking it because if I'm just starting out in God and I stay around that atmosphere, I'm trying to stop. I can't afford to be around it. I'm liable to be lured right back into it. Listen at this. And be not conformed to this world. Now look at yourself. Are you being conformed to this world? To this world. To this world. To this world. That's right. In church. That's true. The churches out here now are conformed to this world. Oh, yes. That's why they got partying in church and dancing. And we're going to keep holding this holy. Ain't nobody bringing that modern, hypocritical, so called, so called Christian junk in here. Amen. We're going to keep holding this holy. Nobody going to try to bring some type of praise dancing unless you dance under the anointing of the Spirit of God. And ain't nobody going to be doing those steps like you, the temptations. <laughs> We're going to keep holding this. Holy. Holy. Amen. 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 You brothers that are not married, you ain't got no business taking nobody's wife out to dinner. No. Amen. I want you fellas to get this. That's right. You sisters that are married and you and your husband may be separated, you ain't got no business taking no single brother in the church after dinner. No. We're going to keep holding this holy. For they that keep holiness holily. Hear, hear this. The book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 10. All right. For they that keep holiness holy. You better read that chapter and verse again. In the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 10. You see, when you keep holiness holy, holy. your life reflect Christ. That's right. And when it don't reflect Christ, it only reflect one more. <laughs> That's right. It's the devil. That's right. That's why you see these people out here saying, man, I'm sick of church. I That's see right. them so-called church people right out there where I'm at. They're not church people. They're sinners just like you. Yeah. They just use church as a mask. 
But when you do it God's way, it's a total change of lifestyle. That's right. It's a change of lifestyle. That's right. And that preacher must preach change. That's right. Or that God, the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creature. Didn't it? That's right. You got to, hallelujah. You got to be a new creature. A new creature. That new creature won't come overnight, but you got to strive that behold all things become new. New. That's right. Listen at this. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. All right. Therefore, if any man be if in Christ, any man, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You know, when you're not new and want to be new, it'll bring tears to your eyes mm. because you want Hallelujah. it so bad. Hallelujah. You know, like that woman sometimes, she really loved that man. I mean, love him. Sometimes she think of him, just tears come to her eyes. Oh, I love him. That's right. Amen. That's Some right. folks think about the, they, they, the love of Jesus. They don't wipe that one tear away. <laughs> Never get teary eyed. No. But my God, man, when you think about what the Lord have done, what he is doing, amen, and what he don't have to do, but he showed mercy on you and done it. Yeah, it make you have tears in your eyes. Oh, yes. Listen at this. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 17. What is it? Therefore, if any man be in Christ. What is it? He is a new creature. What happened? Old thing. What? Old thing. This is why people don't want nothing to do with you churches. That's right. I was talking to two brothers last week in Greenville who came all the way, drove, I believe they drove all the way from Kentucky. Kentucky. They hear the word of God. They, they left a so-called apostolic organization, the UPCI. United Pentecostal. No more Pentecostal uh, than anything. <laughs> they right. believe you can divorce and remarry and have more than one wife and no head covering, no apostles now and all of that stuff is a sin for a man to wear a beard. All that foolishness. <laughs> and they began to question the preachers. They, were, they heard the broadcast and they heard me tell uh, the people, you take these false prophets and grill them. <laughs> Question them with the Bible about their teaching and they took us up on it. They questioned their preaching They questioned their preacher and I listen first time I met them and I told them what happened I said did the preacher give you a fake prophecy that you're gonna die. They hit the table and bust out laughing They said pastor Jennings the preachers. He said I'm gonna put a prophecy on you <laughs> I'm gonna put up that's what all the false prophets do when you when you wake up that they are nothing but liars right then a spell from hell come over them and they all prophesy something terrible gonna happen to you ain't nothing gonna happen to you that's right. if you don't obey the bible the only thing gonna happen is hell that's it that's what's gonna happen that's right the word of god says what therefore if any man be in christ now are you really sincere about being in Christ? In Christ. Then if you really mean business about being in Christ, brother, you ain't going to be outside wearing no more short pants. No. Bible says cover up the shame of your, your, nakedness. your nakedness. You ain't going to be outside with the wife, a wife beater. That's right. Showing your nakedness. That's right. No. <laughs> no. That's right. Sisters won't be out there with pants on. Yeah. Why? I, I'm in Christ. In, in Christ. I'm a new creature. No more hot pants for me. That's right. Amen. That's right. Huh? Oh, you can go swimming if it's among men. Not among men and women. You see them women in them bathing suits. You ain't thinking about the pool. <laughs> Am I right, men? You see all... <laughs> You see all them bikini. That's right. Yeah. Them bikinis and these little things they have on. Uh, ain't nothing but a thong. That's it. Nothing but a thong. That's right. Amen. You ain't think about swimming. That's one time you getting out the water. <laughs> if you already in the water, you're going to get out and just put your feet in there and splash around. That's right. And just look and say, ain't the Lord good? <laughs> You're going to be rocking back and forth. You're going to be rocking back and forth like Ray Charles when he was trying to kick the heaven. <laughs> ain't the Lord good? You ain't thinking about swimming? No. That woman ain't thinking about swimming. She's supposed to be... <laughs> she's supposed to be in Christ. In Christ. And she out there on the beach and here's a barbell boy coming on a wave. And she's like, oh, Jesus, Jesus. 
no time for no speakers to start humming now. <laughs> Glory to God. No. You want to swim? Be in a place where there's just men. Or if you're in your own swimming pool, make sure it's private. Right. You don't invite saints to your swimming pool. That's right. You don't invite no sisters to a brother's house and you looking at them sisters out the window. <laughs> That's right. All right, you fellas back there in the sound room, get this sound right. <laughs> Ain't no time for no humming now. <laughs> Not now. Oh, no. Yeah, get this sound right. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it take God. You better get this. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ain't, ain't no time for those <laughs> Amen. Amen. If I wasn't married and I was swimming and I, I went at the beach, and if I saw my wife in a bikini walking across the beach, uh, you can forget the wave. <laughs> the wave I'm going to look at is that wave that walked by. I'm going. I'm going to keep. Acting like I'm dropping something. <laughs> so holy people, hear me, hear me good. Holy, sanctified people is not laying outside on a beach amongst all them people naked, <laughs> naked. talking about you want to get a tan. That's right. How are you going to get a tan with your clothes on? Yeah. Give me Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. People may think I'm making this up, but Revelation chapter if any three. man be in Christ, he is a new he's creature. a new creature. New creature. All right, new creature. Let me get Bible for you. Revelation chapter 3 and at verse 18. Hear this. I counsel thee to buy here, here, here. Give chapter and verse again. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. Because a man that's a real man, he don't want no other man looking at his wife nakedness. No. You strolling down the beach. I don't care how built your wife is. All she got is something to cover the, her nipples. I'm going to make it plain. All she got, her bikini is no bigger than something to cover the nipples of her breast. And something no more than a shoestring going up her tail. Go ahead. And you men want to fight other men. Because you let your wife come out half naked. Amen. <laughs> Revelation chapter 3 and verse Your 18. bikini ain't hiding nothing. <laughs> no. Here, your bikini is not hiding nothing. That's right. You bikini wearing Christians. <laughs> Anytime right. you sign a church, advertise a Christian cruise, mm. they ain't nothing but the devil's group. That's right. They ain't God's people. No. Imagine God people on a boat half naked singing going up yonder. My Lord. All of you going up yonder. <laughs> You're going right in somebody's cabin, right up yonder on somebody's bed. Go ahead. Am I right? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. Hear this. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Amen. That thou mayest be rich. Imagine a brother got a private pool at his house. All right, his wife said, I'm having some sisters over. Uh, they want to go swimming. All right, they, we, we, the brothers got to leave. Right. He got to leave. His son's got to leave. That's right. When are you going to be done? All right, 3 o'clock, make sure you're done. Because I'm coming back up the driveway. I don't want to see no works. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Don't want to see no works. So at best you call me when you're done. Call me. That means everybody's dressed, got their clothes on, so when I come home, no prayer meeting take place. That's right. So if you got a private pool at your house and you a brother that invite other brothers, your wife and your daughters, go away. That's right. You keep holding this holy. That's right. Am I right? Amen. You keep holding this holy. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter You invite sisters at your house, you got a swimming pool, your husband and the husband, your sons, leave. That's right. You keep holding this. Holy. Holy. That's it. There ain't no need to have them there. And here's your husband looking, and then the wife want to fuss at him. Well, what you looking at her for? Well, what you have her there while he's there for? That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Get this. In the book of the Bible said, said, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Not expedient. So swimming, sisters, if they swimming, be among sisters. That's good. 
Brothers be among brothers. If you go to the YMCA, YMCA, go where only men are there. Not no men and no women. Amen. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21. If you got a baptized at a YMCA and there's women in there swimming, you better be able to concentrate. <laughs> That's right. And your nature shouldn't be rising while you're standing in water looking at that woman in the bikini. That's right. Or the one that performing that baptism is the foul. That's right. Go ahead. And right then you're not fit to baptize. Yeah, not fit. You got to keep that baptism clean. That they keep holiness holy. What? In the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 10. I know what I'm talking. I remember I uh, went and preached the gospel at a prison in Raleigh, North Carolina, women prison. When I asked who wanted to be, who wanted to be baptized, almost every woman in the prison stood up. That's right. Every woman. And of course, the prison certainly was bigger than this. Mm-hmm. And they came and got baptized in whatever they had. Yeah. <laughs> and after it was over, I began to tell one of the brothers who they didn't let in because he forgot his ID. He, I told him what, uh, baptizing the women, the other brother was telling him, he said, Pastor Jennings, it was God's will for me not to have my ID. <laughs> he said, because there's no way I would have sat there and would have been concentrating on Jesus. Them women coming out the pool with wet clothes and and you, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> uh, Williams had, Williams did it the easy way. Uh, he had the towels. He was responsible for giving me the towels because some women, all they had was a lab jacket and nothing on under it. Right. And we had to baptize them one by one, one by one. Some were so happy before that baptism, they embraced me. Thank you, Pastor Jenny. I'm right. I said, all right, thank you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Next. I wasn't looking at their body and all that stuff. I ain't paying you no mind. Next. So Williams had to give me the towels. It was so funny. The very first woman <laughs> that came out the water, she had a lab jacket on and nothing else. And when I brought her out the water and you can see straight through the lab jacket, Williams said, oh. <laughs> Williams. He, he was wise. He, he, tur he turned his back and gave me all the towels like this. <laughs> yes, he did. That's right. He gave me all the towels backward. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He gave me all the towels backward. That's right. Many YMCA's we baptized. Some people out of respect got out the pool. That's right. Out of respect. They got out the pool and left. Yeah. And then were standing there, wrapped themselves up in the towel and watching. But then there's some disrespectful, disrespectful. people got just starts jumping in the pool and swimming more. Yeah. Man, we ain't paid them no mind. We baptized hundreds down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. So if this is what I mean. Yeah. Keeping holiness. Holy. 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 Are you listening? That's right. All right, son. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 10. All right. For they that keep holiness holy shall be... They that keep holiness holy. Shall be judged holy. Shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things... They that have learned such things... Shall find what to answer. You hear that? Amen. You will find what to answer. What to answer. So when you overcome yourself and overcome your weakness, the more you overcome, the more you're able to stand. That's right. The less you overcome, the less you can stand. Yeah. See, some people can say, well, I think you like this. I think you like, who cares what they think? Yeah. Anytime you know what you overcame and you know where God have you, who cares what okay. somebody else think of you? That's right. You have to know where God have you for yourself. Amen. And when you know where God placed you, You'll find those things don't phase you no more. Yeah. Cigarettes don't phase you. God delivers you from it, not only from here, from here and delivered the taste out of your mouth. That's right. Don't phase you. Amen. Drinking, don't phase you. The bikinis, don't phase you. The bathing suits, the swimming trunks, none of that phase you. That's right. Because you got, God has gotten you to a point where you can keep holiness holy. 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 
Sometimes people say, oh, I thank you like this. I thank you like that because they're like that themselves. Yeah. Now, a lot of time, misery loves company. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Go back to the book of Revelation. Back in Revelation chapter 3 and at verse 5. Listen at this. He that overcometh. He that overcome. The same shall be clothed in white raiment. Look at yourself. You that are watching, everybody have a lot to overcome. Oh, yes. Ask God to get all that worldly love out of you. Oh, yes. When he'll get it out, he'll clean you up. Won't he do so? Amen. Well, you ain't never been clean until God do it know how. That's right. You can come to church every week, every day, until the Lord clean you up. Oh, yeah. You better give me Titus chapter yes. 3. Chapter 3. And begin at verse 3. Titus chapter 3 and at the verse 3. The Apostle Paul reflecting on his past here. Titus he said, we ourselves. Also were sometimes foolish. Look at you. We ourselves also. Were sometimes foolish. Weren't you? Oh, yes. Out there like a fool. What else? Disobedient. Uh-oh. Many of us are suffering things now because we were hard-headed years ago and now we're reaping what we sowed years ago. Deceived. If we were to listen to good advice, good instructions, some of the things we're dealing with now wouldn't be in our, be in our life. That's right. But because we were hard-headed, yeah. stubborn, contrary, yeah. and put everything first other than God, now we're trying to overcome what we're trying to overcome. That's right. Hear this. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Foolish. Disobedient. All right, hardhead. Hmm. Wherever you're hardhead at, you know who you are. Yeah. Strive to be obedient to instructions. That's right. Amen. Amen. I know many walking with God or trying to walk with them is a struggle. Yes. I often think of a one couple. Amen. Came to me and talked to me. We was out of town somewhere. Amen. One, the, the wife had on large earrings one night, and uh, she came the next night, little earrings, little than that. I said to myself, "Won't be for long. The earrings will be gone." Amen. Sometimes that's a struggle for women, yeah. you know, because some women I don't understand, but they they feel naked <laughs> without something in their ears. How can your whole body feel naked mm. because you have don't no more earrings? But some women feel that way. For some, it takes years to get them out. That's all right. We're not going to go to you. No, none of the mothers in the church is going to go to you, tap you on the shoulder and say, you better remove them earrings. No, we're going to preach the gospel and to the word of God, prick your heart and then you will take them out on your own. That's right. Huh? We're going to preach the gospel until that long haired man cut his hair. That's right. I'm not going to you and say, hey, do you, what are you supposed to be, a sissy? What's around you? <laughs> That's What's right. What's the matter with you? I, 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 what are you, you you're a mama? You're your mama? I ain't going to do that. No. I'm going to preach the Bible. It's a shame for a man to have mm -hmm. long hair. Right. Now, I remember when we preached that, Brother Lamar, one of the brothers who drive for me, when we go different places, Lamar had dreadlocks past his shoulders. <laughs> you look at Lamar now, you wouldn't think of the same person. And when I would preach against long hair, he would sit on the front row of Frankfurt <laughs> Avenue and say, Amen. That's right. Preach it, Pastor Jennings. Go ahead. That's right. I'm saying to myself, hey, this man saying amen to everything. <laughs> when he got his hair cut, he came to me and spoke to me one Sunday. Greetings, Pastor Jennings. I said, greetings. And kept going. He said, hey, hey, well, Pastor Jennings, it's me. I said, you who? Lamar, I said, what? <laughs> he said, I got a haircut the other night. Mm -hmm. He said, the Lord finally pricked my heart. Mm -hmm. He said, man, the whole time that you was preaching against it, I was saying amen because it was right, not because I wanted to obey it. He said, I was saying amen and mad with you the same time. Mm -hmm. He said, but I knew it wasn't you, it was the Bible. And I had to overcome that. Overcome and when I overcame it, I had no problem sitting in the barber's chair. Wonderful. When you overcome, overcome. you will find it so easy to do that thing that you're struggling with. Yeah. Yeah. And when you overcome, yeah. you'll look back and say, you know, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. 
God will bless you to overcome. Overcome. You will stop worrying about how folk feel about you. It is very important you ask God to help you overcome that. That's right. Worrying about how others feel about you can stop you in the present. And hinder you in the future. Because some people, they live in your past. Oh, yes. And what I mean is this. They know you when you was a sinner. Living all wild like the devil. They don't care what change you made. No. They're going to hold your past in your faith. In your face like it's the present. Oh, yes. They're not looking at you got to strive to live holy. You got to overcome things. Yeah. You got a lot of work to do. They look at you go to church. You're supposed to be instantly like Christ and don't struggle with nothing. So whatever they see you do right away, they're going to say hypocrite. That's right. Phony. That's right. Fraud. Because they don't know better. Right. All they know you go on the church. They don't know nothing about you got to overcome what you got to struggle with. That you got to work. They're not looking at that. All they're looking at you going to church every Saturday or every Sunday, coming back, and they may catch you smoking. Oh, I thought you was a Christian. Look, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm working on me. They don't accept that. That's right. Oh, you go to that man, Pastor Jennings. Oh, he let you smoke. <laughs> Right away, they blame it all on me. That's right. You can smoke in Geno's church? <laughs> this is not Geno's church. That's right. Everybody in here is struggling with something. Oh, yes. And everybody in here has some things, plural, to overcome. Oh, yes. You can overcome everything with God's help. That's right. Everything. They can look down on you as long as they want. Listen, Pastor Paul, before he was made an apostle, the scripture tells us he was a murderer. That's right. A injurious, which means he injured people, a persecutor, a blasphemer. But Brother Paul said he obtained mercy. Mercy. Obtaining mercy, he looked back at his past. In the book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 3, he says, For we ourselves also we, were sometimes fools. And we all can identify with this scripture. Oh, yes. Chapter and verse again. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. We ourselves, ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Look at your past life. Can you not see where you was a fool? Oh, yes. On so many occasions. So many. And now you look back, you like got to scratch your head. What was I thinking about? <laughs> if you saw him or her again, you would walk by and not even take their number or ask them their name. Amen. Amen. With many a people. <laughs> we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Many that are here are victims of being coerced by friends. That's right. Friends looked at your instability. And your weakness. Some do it now. Oh, yes. That's why it isn't good and wise to be so quick to confide in just anybody. That's right. 